Someone drew a cartoon the world almost burned down to the ground. So it's time to draw cartoons and insult them. It's that simple or else we're all going to wind up dead. It's, that's why she's right, Pamela Geller. I don't care what anyone says. She's 100% right. Either, either we take them on now while we can or we're all dead. Or next thing you know, you'll be braying over a prayer rug and, and praying to Mecca six times a day. That's all. 855-407-282. Rich on KSFO is a malcontent of some kind. What's your problem, Rich? No, I, I uh, just want to compliment you again, Mike, on your, your show. The- all right, come on. You want to put me down. Get to it, please. Don't, don't try to be a wise guy. What is it you really want to say? No, no, no. You're, you're an author, and the trilogy that you just finished, it, it's a fantastic work. It's very difficult. Very few people actually publish a book. A lot of people talk about it. You did it, and you have a wonderful show. It's very well researched. I have nothing bad to say to you. Um, at all. I'm not here to put you down at all. Um, in regards to propaganda, I did have a mention, which is that it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems to me that you have millions of listeners. You're telling people about ISIS. Is, are you not doing a public service in regards to pu- creating propaganda? Well, propaganda would be false depictions of the enemy. I am giving you actual depictions of the enemy. These are facts. They're raping eight-year-old girls when they capture them. You know that, don't you? I I do, and I'm listening to the... They rape eight-year-old girls because they say it's in their holy book. Do you understand how sick this is? I do. And I... why, Why doesn't the media do something about it? We have all the power in the world. Why doesn't Harvey Weinstein make one movie showing these throwbacks for who they are? What's wrong with these guys in Hollywood? That's what I'm saying, Rich. That's my whole appeal is I'm insulting Katzenberg, Weinstein, and Geffen. I hope the message reaches them in a tape MP3. I hope someone MP3s it to them and says, this guy is right. We better do something. We're an embarrassment to humanity. Well, there was a recent movie with, um, with, uh, with shoot, uh, the, uh, uh, of a sniper, American sniper or something like that. Right. Um, wasn't that a fairly accurate uh, done movie in regards to... Yes, and American Muslims boycotted the movie because they were insulted by the fact that he killed Muslims who were scum in the other world, in the, in the Middle East. They didn't like that. We're filled with enemies. Obama flooded the country with Muslim enemies. Let's be clear and stop mincing words. Well, I'm just saying that was a very successful movie. That was a, that was a, um, a movie that, that actually probably set the tone for other movies like um, Lone Survivor. I am sick and tired of these Muslim immigrants stepping on my flag and setting it on fire. They can go back to the crap holes they came from. And I agree. Let with them you. go join ISIS if they hate it here. And if you think I'm making it up that Obama flooded us with haters, listen to a little fact. A shock poll. 81% of Al Jazeera Arabics, Arabs polled support ISIS. In a recent survey conducted by Al Jazeera.net, the website for the Al Jazeera Arabic television channel, respondents overwhelmingly support the Islamic State terrorist group, with 81% voting yes on whether they approved of ISIS's conquest in the region. The poll, which asked in Arabic, do you support the organizing victories of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, ISIS, has generated over 38,000 responses thus far, with only 19% of respondents voting no to supporting ISIS. The country is filled with a fifth column. Obama has flooded America with the most America-hating immigrants you can imagine. So let's not talk about the Mexicans who are building houses. Let's do a hard focus on the Muslims he has brought in and intends to bring in. And let's not sit here blaming the Mexicans for the problems in this country. Because the fact is most of them work harder than you do. That's all. That's the fact of reality. I know you don't want to hear it, but the fact is if you go to any construction site, you'll see who's banging the hammer and running the saw. And it's not John Q. Republican. That's all. He's on the golf course. He's on the golf course uh, swilling some bourbon, and he's complaining about America because the taxes are too high. I don't blame him. The taxes are twice what they should be. You want to talk about taxes to me? I'll give you a simple answer. I didn't invent it. A flat tax. Make everyone in the country pay the same tax. That would be fair. Make even those on the bottom who are paying nothing pay 15%. Then suddenly you'd find out that we don't have to tax the rich anymore since the rich pay most of the taxes anyway. A 15% from everybody would do wonders, wouldn't it? 
And that would include Robert De Niro. That would include Warren Buffett. That would include all the people who tell us we don't pay enough taxes. I don't know what their taxes are, what they pay. But every time I hear a, a trillionaire talk about fairness and you should pay more taxes, I wonder what they really pay. I wonder how many double Dutch techniques they use to pay next to nothing, receiving their income in so many guarded forms that it would make Bill Clinton look like Snow White. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So let's go to my main point, which is why we need propaganda to win and why conservatives are losing. Hillary, for example, is using a fake Southern accent as part of her propagandist efforts. Of course, it's failed because she's being laughed at. Now, whether she's being laughed at in the South, I don't know. Maybe the people down there that she speaks to are so stupid, they don't even know that she's faking it and there's a mockery of herself. I don't know. Maybe they are as stupid as she thinks. Maybe the Jews that she speaks before are as stupid as Obama thinks when he says he's the first member of the tribe. Maybe the Jews are as dumb as she is. I don't know. I really can't explain the next person. But I do know that only by maligning the enemy and smearing the enemy and debasing the enemy and making the enemy into something subhuman can we ever win the war against the worst scourge the planet has seen since Hitler, which is the Islamic State and why they're winning. Which leads us back to this point. The conservative intellectuals, where are they? There are almost none. The, f the sad truth is that some of the most brilliant minds of our time are falsely political progressives. Don't confuse yourself and assume that they're progressives because they're stupid or that with the glib tongue they're all low-information voters. Many of these people would rather be nice and kind than right. They may even know that their politics are wrong, but they'd rather err on the side of kindness which leads me to the next point. Hatred is not a philosophy. And I'm asking you again, who are the conservative creators, the conservative intellectuals other than me? Yes, I'll put myself in the top echelon. I am so sick and tired of pretending that we're all the same. We're not all the same. It takes more than hatred to make a movement. It takes more than every day false righteous indignation to make a point. Give me a break from all these multi-millionaire talk show hosts who don't give 10 cents to charity, screaming about the little guy who's hurting, or falsely complaining about the economy that's dying as they build beachfront mansions built on the swamp of hate and deceit. And I'll reiterate that I've given money away for years to deserving Marines who were facing court-martials they didn't deserve. I donated this year $20,000 for a van to Brent Gromit and Matt so they have a car to drive. And I'm about to donate $100,000 in scholarships to deserving college students, five $20,000 scholarships. We've been working on that for four months now. And so we need propaganda. We don't need aggregators. That's, don't, don't confuse aggregators of news stories with conservative creators. Don't confuse aggregators of news stories with talkers who have an intellect. Please don't make the confusion. There are some good nonfiction books out there that are on the conservative side. I've written many of them. Well, they're okay. How many conservatives have written fiction, such as I have just done with the Masterpiece Countdown to Mecca, in order to broaden the appeal of my viewpoint? Can you name one conservative filmmaker? Can you name one conservative poet? Can you name one conservative musician? Can you name one conservative painter? Who? It takes more than hatred to make a movement. It takes more than screaming every day about how bad everything is in order to make a movement, which is why so many people and some of the most brilliant minds of our time are falsely political progressives. They'd rather be nice than right. As we go on, we must use the power of propaganda to build a prejudice against the Islamo-fascists in order to beat them at their own game. Propaganda was used in World War II to smear the Japanese and to smear the Germans. It invigorated our troops. Was it pretty? No, it was pretty ugly. And the German leaders knew 
as Frederick and Bismarck and the Kaiser had known, that you can't start ruthless aggression abroad without ruthless discipline at home. Therefore, the time had come for the Republic to be eliminated. To achieve this, they needed a tool with which to appeal to the Germans' old passion for superiority and conquest. Not a feudal monarch this time like Frederick, nor an aristocratic landowner like Bismarck, nor an emperor like the Kaiser, but an ex-corporal of the German army, with a fanatic gleam in his eye and the power to arouse a mob. Preaching the same old doctrine as his predecessor. The old doctrine that had never failed to arouse the German people. Himself jobless, uneducated, cowardly. Was it stereotypical? Yes, it was. Did it help the troops fear, a feel that they can defeat the enemy? Yes, it did. But right now, our troops have nothing to go on other than a hatred for themselves. If they're white, they're being indoctrinated by goons in the military who tell them they have white privilege. If they're straight and Christian, they're being indoctrinated by vermin in the military who are telling them that straight and Christian is evil. So everything is upside down. The left is everywhere with their propaganda. And we on the conservative side are nowhere with effective propaganda. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of hatred out there on our side. But there's very little intellect. And there's even less art. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. The headline screams, Baltimore residents who wanted cops to leave neighborhoods now afraid to go outside. After the race hustlers like Obama, Sharpton, uh, uh, whatever his name was, the attorney general so-called, went to Baltimore, stirring up trouble in the streets before it happened, which led to rioting, looting, and deranged violence. The loony left turned on the police, told the police to get out of their neighborhoods. So the police left their neighborhoods. And now the murderous criminals are on a murderous rampage in the heart of Baltimore, and people are afraid to go out of their houses. In the black neighborhoods, by the way, let's be very clear. So I'm showing you how this can metastasize into a nation. Think Baltimore. Obama, Eric Holder, now, of course, Loretta Lynch has joined the pack. Obama, uh, Holder, and uh, de Blasio attacked the police for six straight month months. The city burned. The police were told to stand down by the goofball who runs the city. Now black residents are screaming that the police who used to protect them aren't coming out to protect them. They say they can't come out of their apartments to even go shopping anymore because those police aren't there. The very uh, pigs that they hated and said, you know, bring them down, bring down the pigs. Remember that little story? The residents of Baltimore who hated the police are now saying there are no police uh, to save them. So they're afraid to go to the store because uh, there's no one to protect them. Well, here's a headline. Cops more afraid of going to jail for doing their job than getting shot. That's San Francisco. That's been policing here for years. Don't get me wrong. The cops are very brave. But what would you do if you were them? You'd stay in the, in the station as often as you could and count your 401k until you retired. They're human beings. You know, they have to go home at night. They're dealing with the scum of the earth. They're the ones who have to pick up the human trash every day off the streets and keep them from killing you. So when you debase them and put them down every day, what do you expect them to do, protect you? Which leads me directly to the uh, next story that uh, is tied in somewhere. Not directly. It's sort of like what I'm afraid could happen here. And that's what's happening in South Africa. You don't know what's going on in South Africa because the media has a seamless seal over what's happened in South Africa since local rule took over. You don't know about the killing of whites. You don't know about the appropriation of land. You don't know about the rape epidemic. You know nothing of this. All you do is sing Kumbaya, and you think that everything is wonderful because the evil whites were thrown out. You don't know that more people have been killed under local rule than were ever killed under the rule of the so-called farmers called the Boers. You know nothing. You know nothing about reality. All you know is who George Clooney isn't and things of that nature. So, Continuing on the propaganda front, meaning showing you propaganda used in World War II, please play clip 18. I want you to listen carefully to this newsreel clip when he gets to the point where he says that the Congress became nothing but a body of parrots. Listen.
Stop thinking and follow your god emperor, cried the Japanese warlords. And Japan will rule the world. And the people answered, Bonsai, Bonsai.